All right, so let's uh, uh, continue then. So let's look at the output swing. And in the last lecture, we had seen that uh, output swing may be determined by several considerations. One of them is that our transistor should always stay out of saturation region. And with that in mind, we said that uh, this is where we take the output. And VE is the DC value here. And when we apply an input along with the DC, there is a uh, AC signal as well. And what happens is that during the positive swing, the emitter voltage here is becoming larger. And therefore, the collector emitter voltage is becoming smaller. And all that we have to do is ensure that under the worst case condition also, the transistor is still inactive. So with that in mind, we said VCC, uh, this is the collector voltage, VCC minus the maximum emitter voltage that I can get is VE plus whatever is my output voltage here, VE plus V0. That should be greater than VC sat. And from there, we get this condition that my V0 will always be less than or equal to VCC minus VC sat minus ICQRE, ICQRE or the emitter voltage here. So that's one constraint. Given a uh, amplifier, given a particular design, what you need to do is determine what is the emitter voltage. And, and then V0 will always be less than this particular value here. All right, so that's one constraint. Let's go forward and see another constraint here. Let's look at the same uh, common collector amplifier. And this time, uh, focus our attention on this particular node here, VB, the base voltage here. Now, re so far, we had always, while talking about output swing, we had always concerned ourselves with, obviously, the output because the input was much smaller than the output because the amplifier had gain. But now we know that V0, whatever is the signal here, the same must be the signal here. The same must be the AC signal here as well because the gain of this amplifier is one. And therefore we need to uh, bother about this particular one. So one of the constraints can be, you know, if, if we are uh, designing our amplifier system with a uh, certain VCC, and uh, VCC and ground, one of the constraints can be that the voltage at any particular node uh, cannot exceed VCC. Voltage at any particular node cannot exceed VCC. Now, does that seem reasonable? That if I take, if I have a circuit and the circuit is running between a supply voltage of certain 12 volts, then none of the voltages in my circuit will exceed 12 volts. Does that seem reasonable? If it seems reasonable to you, it may not be. All right, we'll just see. It may not be reasonable. But if it seems reasonable to you, then you would always also realize the following. If you say that the voltage at anywhere in my circuit cannot exceed VCC, then fine, this is my ceiling. VCC is my ceiling here. This is voltage VB whatever that DC value is, we've drawn that. And we know that on top of the voltage VB, there would be an AC voltage here. There would be an AC voltage here, which is the V in voltage here. And therefore, if you're saying the ceiling is VCC, then what you are also saying is that VB, the DC value, plus V in. When I write V in here, I mean the maximum value of the input voltage here, okay? So the amplitude. So VB plus V in must be less than or equal to VCC. That's what you're saying. If the ceiling is VCC, then you're saying the sum of the DC plus the sum of the amplitude of the AC must be less than or equal to VCC here. So this is implying that V in must be less than VCC minus VB. V in must be less than VCC minus VB. And we know that this is a amplifier with a gain of one. So you can also say, instead of writing VB plus V in less than VCC, you will also, you can also write VB plus V0 because V in is practically V0. So you are also saying VB plus V0 is less than VCC. And therefore you are saying V0 is less than or equal to VCC minus VB. You're, you're putting that also. Okay. But let me first uh, come back to your notion that if I have a circuit running uh, between plus 12 and zero, voltage everywhere in the circuit has to be less than VCC. So let's uh, uh, see. All right. So here is, I've not listed here. This is VCC is 12. 
all right is 12 uh, with the design that is given to you this is 6.17 okay 6.17 and suppose i drive it with 7 volt ac do you think 7 what should i get here on the positive side if let's say if you don't think about vcc for a moment then if this is the dc value 6.17 and you apply an ac what happens that the ac starts to ride on top of the dc so the positive value should be 6.17 plus 713.1 and the negative value will go 6.17 minus this do you think is possible let me show you simulation results i'm looking at this node look at that starts from here goes to 13 no problem it goes to 13 the voltage at this particular node goes to 13 of course if it goes to 13 and this is 12 it means the current is current is all going in wrong wrong directions is not coming down and all that but as far as this particular node is concerned i'm not bothered about the rest of the transistor and all that i'm not looking at that but i'm saying as far as this node is concerned this node is going up to 13 that's not a problem uh, you think about it why it is going because uh, when you have capacitors you'll read i mean you'll see capacitors are also i don't know whether in two, esc 201 you you've seen capacitors are also used for doubling the voltage capacitors can double if you have a 1 volt ac and using a capacitive circuit i can get a voltage which is from 1 volt to 2 volt capacitive doublers are there all right so from 1 volt i can get 2 volt i can get even triple i can get 3 volt and 4 volt and all that doubler triplers and all that are, all are there anyway i i don't want to uh, uh, you know it has got nothing to do with transistors and all that as you can see here all that i did was there's a voltage divider and this is 6.17 i add a capacitor here the voltage does go up to 30 think about it how it goes and all that so coming back i said the voltage at this particular node we were saying is always less than vcc the ceiling is vcc that's not true that's not true when you have a capacitor it's not true okay so so uh, then all this that we are writing is not true okay but many times the circuits that we will look at is where the signal that is going into your common collector amplifier this is your common collector amplifier the signal that is going to your common collector amplifier is not coming through a capacitor but is directly coupled from the previous stage is directly coupled from the previous stage okay in that case if you look at it here when there is no signal the value uh, dc value is vb here and in that case and when you apply a signal in that case v in plus vb cannot exceed vcc because the transistor previous transistor has to be on and and you know in all these analog circuits all the transistors have to be on let's say and then this cannot exceed vcc because otherwise there's no current here and also then this transistor turns off so in direct coupled circuits i can make the assertion that the net voltage at the base of my transistor must be less than vcc in direct couple in this case note that all that i did was this signal i just applied an external signal 7 volt i applied an external signal 7 volt or 8 volts and all that but you have to ask where is it coming from so i'm i'm pointing out to a case where many times what would happen is that the common collector amplifier is used to drive a load and the common collector amplifier will be driven by a previous stage and the previous stage that you are driving many times is 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 directly coupled capacitors and all that are avoided uh, uh, and therefore in this case indeed if we look at this particular situation we find that this node here this node here cannot exceed vcc here cannot exceed vcc here and therefore uh, uh, the net voltage if it cannot exceed vcc here then then are uh, uh, then the uh, uh, the uh, whatever we looked at earlier that uh, dc value is vb here and then v in so vb plus v in must be less than vcc here and uh, uh, this anyway is true so let's uh, 
uh, VB, as you can see here, VB value is ICQRE plus VBE. Base voltage here is ICQRE plus VB here. That's what we have written. V in is practically equal to V0. V, v in here is practically equal to V0 here. So we can take this equation and write ICQRE plus VBE plus V0 must be less than VCC. This equation here becomes this one here. Note that there, uh, I've, I've, at some places I've used capital V in and some places a small V in. They are the same values here. Th these are all AC values here. V in here. So ICQRE plus VB plus V0 less than VCC. So we get another constraint that V0 will always be less than VCC minus VB minus ICQRE. When? When I drive it from a previous stage and when I drive it from a previous stage, we know that this node voltage cannot exceed VCC. If I'm not driving it from a previous stage, if I had an independent voltage source, there I could have applied anything that I want here. So I'm not talking about that situation. But if it's being driven from a previous stage, this node voltage is limited to VCC, and therefore we have this constraint also. So we've seen two constraints. Let me put both the constraints together. The first constraint was my transistor should not go into saturation. And that gave me this limit. VCC minus ICQRE, minus VC sat. The second constraint was this voltage cannot exceed VCC here. Ceiling is VCC here. And that gives me V0 must be less than VCC minus ICQRE minus VB. If I look at these two constraints, if I look at these two constraints, this one will always be lower. Because VBE, you know, is about 0.7 or 0.8 or so, and VC sat is 0.1 or 0.2, which means that this limit will always win over this particular limit here. You'll start violating this limit before you start violating this one. Okay, so we need not bother about this situation here because before you reach this limit, you'll encounter this particular limit. Here. So what we are finding is then that my output voltage swing will always be less than or equal to under this situation. Note that when you're driving it like this, will always be equal to less than or equal to VCC minus ICQRE minus VB, minus VBE, okay? So that's, that's one constraint here. Let's come back to the third. So we've looked at two constraints, but we have said this may not be very important, and this is the more important one. Let's look at the third constraint, a very important constraint here. This has got to do with that my circuit must have enough current in it in order to develop a voltage swing. For example, let's say if this is 1K, if RL is 1K and we are talking about a swing of 6 volt here, if we are talking a, a swing of 6 volt here and this is 1K, obviously when you are going to a positive swing of 6, then 6 divided by 1K, which means 6 milliampers. My circuit here must be capable of driving that much current into my load. It must have that capacity of driving 6 milliampers. If it does not have that capacity of driving 6 milliampers, there's going to be trouble. I will not be able to develop that particular swing. Note, if RL is 100 ohms and you want 6 volt here, then the current that you're requiring is 6 divided by 100 ohms, which is 60 milliampers. So my circuit must have that capability of driving that much current into my load. If you don't design it properly, it may not have that capability. So let's look at that, that particular issue here. So Swing is also determined very importantly by how much drive current is available here. All right, so let's uh, let's look at this here. So again, we are looking at the output side, and uh, the DC value is VE here, and this is uh, a positive swing and negative swing here. So we look at two considerations. We look at does my circuit have enough drive current in the positive side here, positive peak? That's where you note that the current in the load will be maximum, maximum positive current. And then here, the current, as you can realize, is negative. Current is going up here because the V0 is negative, so the current is going up. So we'll look at these two extremes, where I require at the positive voltage extreme and at the negative voltage extreme here. So let, let's look at the positive voltage extreme here. Note that when, at, when I'm at the positive voltage here, positive voltage extreme, whatever is V0 here, I require a current here, V0 by RL. Where will this current come from? It eventually has to come from the supply. 
the current starts from the supply this one part of the current goes here and goes into the load and the other part comes over here. okay that's a simple current division so based on this current division we can write this current is ic left hand side ic what is this current equal to this current will be equal to the net voltage at this point net voltage is what ve plus v not ve plus v not maximum value of the v not ve plus v not divided by re that's the net voltage at this particular point and what is the voltage going into my load v0 by r so it's a simple current uh, division that ic must be equal to ve plus v not by re plus v not by r all right can there be a problem that in this case that i do not have enough drive current suppose i do not have enough drive current there is not enough current available here for some reason if you think that there is not enough current available here what will it manifest itself that there is not enough current available here which means that you will not be able to reach the desired value here right so let, let's take an example here suppose i'm applying 1 volt here if there were enough current in my circuit if you apply 1 volt here what should you get here 1 volt you should get 1 volt because it has a gain of 1 you should get 1 volt here but if there is not enough current in my circuit what would happen there is not current enough current here and instead of 1 volt you will get something less let's say you get less 0.7 for a moment so you don't have enough current and you get 0.7 now are you seeing the consequence of that 1 volt here that you apply here where is that 1 volt going here at this point and this 0.7 is basically over here note before that what was the net voltage between these two points before you applied this voltage here what was the net voltage 0.7 now you applied 1 volt here what did, uh, uh, just for the sake of uh, analysis let's say this is 5 here this is 5 and this is 4.3 okay this is 5 and this is 4.3 now when you apply 1 volt this becomes 5 plus 1 6 and this is 4.3 and we are saying this is not going up to 0.7 so it is going to 4.3 plus 0.7 so becomes 5 what is the net base emitter voltage then instead of 0.7 it becomes 1 volt and if base emitter voltage becomes higher what does it do so note that if it does not reach the if a v0 a voltage here and voltage here are not the same that instead of 0.7 you get a higher effective base emitter voltage and note that as the base emitter voltage increases the collector current increases as the base emitter between this is a relationship between collector current and base emitter voltage so what i'm trying to say is the following if you think that this voltage will not be equal to this voltage here then what would happen is that the net base emitter voltage will rise and as the net base emitter voltage rises the current rises here and as the current rises here it supplies the current that is required and this will go back to 1 volt so you will not encounter a problem that i do not have enough drive current you won't encounter the situation if there isn't enough drive current here this voltage will fall compared to this and there will be more forward biasing of base emitter junction and this current will increase and will supply it so you don't get into an issue of the drive current issue drive current here automatically increases automatically increases to uh, uh, to a value such that there is enough current for my load here so you don't encounter that particular problem here the problem occurs in this is when you go to the negative swing let's look at that let's look at the negative swing here so we said there will not be a problem here in terms of drive current when i look at this here let's look at the negative side here so in negative side look at the current requirements here v0 is negative now note that v0 is negative current is flowing up current is flowing up here will flow like this and 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 the transistor current will always be flowing down in forward active mode this is always flowing down this is a current that always has to go here so now note this condition here the current this current plus this current this current plus this current must be equal to this one here. that's the uh, kcl now kirchhoff's current law this is the, these these two currents add up 
and are equal to this. So now what is this current here? This current will be equal to DC VE minus V0. Net voltage at this point is VE minus V0. So VE minus V0 divided by RE, that's the net current here. This must be equal to V0 by RL. We are only looking at the magnitude part of this, V0 by RL plus IC, plus IC. All right, we see this relationship. Okay, now what is, see, you are applying a negative voltage here. When you are applying a negative voltage here, uh, can I, uh, if I look at this relationship, can I write this? What is the least that you can get here? The least collector current that you could get is, let's say, a negligible value, very small value. If you, it, because you are applying a negative voltage here, so you are slightly reducing the base emitter voltage here and reducing the collector current. What is the best that you can do in terms of the collector current? Perhaps drive it very close to the edge of cutoff and make this current zero. Okay. So if I look at this relationship, IC is always greater than or equal to zero. So then if I assume IC to be, let's say, negligible, so what this equation is implying is that VE, which is ICQRE minus V0 by RE must be greater than V0 by RL because this is always positive. IC is always positive. The best that you could do is make it very small. That's all. Okay. So this relationship will always be, always has to be satisfied. And then if we rewrite this, this basically is telling you is that V0 will always be less than or equal to ICQ RE parallel RL. That's what is the relationship we are arriving at. V0 will always be less than or equal to ICQ RE parallel RL. Which means that there is a real limitation on how much swing I can get. If I'm biasing it, let's say my bias current ICQ is 1 milliampere. If the bias current is 1 milliampere, RE is 2K and RL is also 2K, then 1 milliampere, 2K parallel 2K is 1K, 1 milliampere into 1K, 1 volt. So what this relationship is saying, the maximum swing that you can get is 1 volt. That's it. What is the swing being limited by? Well, it's obviously limited by RE and RL, but very importantly, note that ICQ. If I bias it at 1 milliampere and RE parallel RL is 1K, all that I will get is 1 volt swing. I cannot get higher than that. My, my circuit does not have enough current to give me that. If you want 2 volt swing and you have 1 milliampere here, what would happen? Let's say I drive it with 2 volts. And I have 1 milliampere here, and this is 2K parallel 2K, so this is here. So what will happen then? 2 volt I'm applying, and this is maximum swing is 1 volt. Where do you think problem will occur? It will not occur here. As we said, on the positive side, my circuit will always have enough drive current to reach 2 volt. So if you apply 2 volt here, this will go up to 2 volt. But then, what, what is it saying? It says on the negative side, the limit is 1. And so on the negative side, what will happen is it will go here, reach 1, and then level off. It will level off here. Because it cannot go above 1 volt. It says that V0 has to be less than or equal to 1 volt. I don't have enough current to go 2 volt here. So you get, it's, it levels off here, so you get high distortion. All that part above 1, below 1 volt, all that will be clipped. You will simply not get that. Okay, obviously then you are getting it. it uh, you know, when you, when you want enough swing, you want it on both positive and negative side. It doesn't matter that I can go up to 2 volt here, but I can only go up to minus 1 volt here. It doesn't help. So this is a, a serious limitation that we are finding here. That V0 will always be less than or equal to ICQ RE parallel RL. And that will also decide my swing here. Okay. Uh, if you're thinking of, so we have seen three limitations. Uh, one of them is from this uh, current side. Another one of them was from the saturation angle. And the third one was that the net voltage here cannot exceed the ceiling of VCC here. So three limits we had seen. And out of that, we are finding two of them are important. Harmonic distortion is not a serious issue. Why? Because uh, the VS is almost equal to V0 here. 
Vs, whatever Vs is almost equal to V0. And you know that there is a large uh, resistance connected here, which we have seen earlier acts as a negative feedback. And, and, and harmonic distortion is, is not an issue in, in your common collector amplifier. So you don't need to worry about that. So if I come back, uh, all right, so uh, uh, let's look at this particular example here, a common collector example here. ICQ is, uh, this is biased at 3.4 milliampers, VCQ is 6.5, AV and all of that is, is given here. The, what, the question that we are asking is how much swing can we get here? How much swing can we get? Well, the f one limit we said is VCC minus VBE minus ICQRE. That was because of that ceiling of VCC equal to 12 volt. So if I cal evaluate that, I find that V0 should be less than or equal to 5.85. The other limit we said is V0 will always be less than or equal to ICQRE parallel RF. This is 3.2. So what is my swing determined by? Swing is determined by that I do not have enough drive current. It should be 3.2, not 5.85. Let's look at it here. So maximum swing that I should get is 3.2. I apply about 3 volt here, and we get nice 3 volt here, no problem, because 3.2 means I should 3 volt, it should work fine. Harmonic distortion, as I said, is very small. That's not an issue. Suppose I do drive it at now beyond 3.2. Say I drive it with 3.5 volt here. V in is 3.5. Note that on positive side, there is no problem. On negative side, you see clipping is getting clipped because I don't have enough drive current to go to 3.5 volt here. And so negative side, it gets clipped here. Harmonic distortion rises here. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you can go ahead and drive it at 5.85. Uh, You'll find when you drive it at 5.85, it nicely goes to maybe 5.85 on the positive side. On the negative side, it will get clipped at 3. Okay. All right. So that's uh, so the issue is there are, you know, two kinds of problems that uh, you encounter. One is you're given a common emitter, a common collector amplifier like this. And you can be asked to calculate its gain and input and output traces. You're interested in finding out what these values are. And you're also interested in knowing how much swing can I get. So a design is given and you have to calculate what the possibilities are in terms of swing and all that. The other issue is. I don't know what R1, R2, RC, RE, all of those things are. I want to design it in such a way that I get large swing. So when you encounter a design problem, then how do we design for highest possible swing? Okay, so let's look at that. One of the constraints on swing is V0 less than or equal to ICQ, RE parallel RL. The other constraint is V0 must be less than or equal to VCC minus VB minus ICQ, RE. The two constraints, as you can see here, they conflict with each other. If you want to get high swing from this consideration, you would like to make ICQ large. On the other hand, if you would like high swing from this consideration, you would like to make ICQ small. Okay. And so what happens is V0 is always equal to the minimum of the two. Whichever one is minimum will decide how much swing will you get. Will it be determined by this one or will it be determined by this one? And as we had seen earlier, if you want to design it for maximum swing, what you need to do is ICQ, uh, you need to balance the two of them. If you make ICQ very large or RE very large, then this is fine. Then this becomes a problem. If you make ICQ RE very small, then this is okay, but this becomes a problem. So for maximum swing, what you need to do is balance the two of them, two constraints, and make both of them equal. Both of them equal, balance both of them, and then rearrange all these equations, and you get how you should design. How should you choose ICQ? Uh, to get maximum possible swing and how you get V0 here. All right, so these two constraints is all that you have to do is equate, manipulate your equations, and you get uh, the the um, um, uh, method for designing the highest swing here. All right, so, uh, so let's let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So this is the, uh, for, if you're designing for maximum swing, what we are finding is you should choose uh, the maximum swing that you will get is this. V0 equal to VCC minus VB2 plus RE divided by RL. And ICQ you have to choose in this particular manner. This only tells you how to choose ICQ and what value of V0 that you get here. But there's one more variable which is left, which is RE. Now, if you want maximum swing, what should you do? RL is given to you. You can't touch RL. 
So what should you do with Ari? Highest possible swing if you're looking for what should you do to Ari? Make Ari much smaller than RL. Because if I make Ari equal to RL, then this becomes 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, so you get V0 is VCC minus VB by 3. You don't want that. Highest possible swing would be when this term is minimized. So you'll make RE much smaller than RL. Now, are you saying that if I make RE much smaller than RL, what is the price that I have to pay? RL is fixed. If I make RE much smaller, if I start making RE much smaller, this is becoming much smaller. This factor is practically equal to half, so that you don't worry about it. If RE becomes much smaller, what happens to ICQ? It starts becoming very large. Large ICQ, which means large participation. Okay, so this is a price that you have to pay. If you want to reach the highest possible swing, you'll have to make RE at least one tenth or one twentieth of RL, and then this value becomes very high. All right, so let's, let's look at that. So our design criteria with this circuit becomes that I should choose RE much smaller than RL. If I do that, uh, then as you can see here, if I use RE much smaller than RL, this factor is, let's say we ignore it. Uh, VCC for us, let's say is 12. So 12 minus 0.7, uh, 12 minus 11.3, 11.3 divided by 2. So we get about 5.6. So maximum swing that we can get is 5.6. But we have to choose RE much smaller than RL, and so ICQ becomes very large. As an example, let me show you. So if we use this one, uh, we designed it. So RL is 2.2K. RL is 2.2K, and we said you have to choose RE much smaller than RL. So we have chosen RE as 0.22K. Okay, 0.22K uh, we have chosen uh, as RE here. And that decides now, as you can see here, ICQ. Because RE is much smaller than RL, so this factor is 1 over 2. And uh, ICQ is, uh, uh, once you choose RE, 0.22K, you will get the value of ICQ. Once you get the value of ICQ, then you can get R1, R2, and all that. Okay? And, and uh, note that ICQ is decided. RE is decided. Both RE, I know is uh, 0.22k, ICQ is decided, so ICQ RE is also decided, the drop here, and which means that the voltage at this particular point is also decided, and then you can determine a suitable value of R1 and R2 to give rise to uh, that particular value. So that's how you design. But note that uh, ICQ I require is 25 milliampers for developing a swing of 5.6 volt across 2.2k resistor. 25 milliampers here. Now, there's a little bit of problem that you would notice here. How much swing am I saying? 5.6. How much current does my load require? 5.6 divided by 2.2K. So 5.6 divided by 2.2K is how much? 2 milliampere? Load requires 2 milliampers. Then why is my transistor requiring 25 milliampers? If my load requires 2 milliampere and my transistor requires 25 milliampere, you know that there is, is, is probably there's something wrong with this schematic. I'm drawing 25 milliampere from my uh, supply to give only 2 milliampere to the load. There's something wrong, which means it's not a good circuit. I mean, a good circuit would be if I need to deliver 2 milliampers to the load, at the most I should maybe take 2.5 milliampers from my supply. If a little bit of current is required elsewhere in my circuit, I should use only 2.5, not 25. But then this is what this circuit is demanding. That if you want to get the maximum swing here, I have to make RE much smaller than RL. And, and if we follow that, this is what we end up with. This, so this circuit is not good. This circuit is not good in terms of its ability to drive current into the load. And why is this so? Why is this so? If you realize the current limitation is coming from the negative side. The current, why this circuit is poor, is coming because of the negative side. Look at this relationship again. Look at this relationship again. On the negative side, this current 
is flowing up. It is V0 by RL. This current is there. This current coming from the transist transistor part here. The two add up and they give rise to that. Now, what is the DC value of the current? DC bias point of this particular circuit is what? How much is the current? VE by RE. That's the DC current. Do you see that? VE is the DC value. RE is the uh, resistance here. So that's the DC current here. VE by RE. So I'm biasing it at VE by RE. Right? I'm biasing it at VE by RE. But when I apply a negative voltage here, what happens to this current? When I apply a negative voltage here, what happens to the current here? This is the current which supplies this. Note that this current is what supplies this particular one here. Forget about this. For the moment, let's say this current is negligible. Okay? So this current is what is supplying here. So now I've designed VE by RE equal to 25 milliampere. This is 25 milliampere is flowing here. But when I apply a negative voltage here, what happens to this current? This voltage becomes negative and this net current here also starts falling. It falls here. So it, aren't you seeing that there's something bad? I mean, I've designed it with 25 milliampere here. Now when I apply a voltage here, I don't get 25 milliampere here. This current starts falling. From 25 milliampere, it keeps on falling because as I raise my V0, this current becomes smaller and smaller. So this is an issue here. The current at, from here to here, this current which has to supply here, itself depends on V0 and starts to decrease. And with that in mind, suppose I don't take RE here and I put IE here, a current source. I put a current source here. Now, when I put a current source here, compared to a resistor, this current source is going to remain the same, whatever voltage happens here. If I put 25 milliampere here, this 25 milliampere will remain whether I apply a V0 or don't apply a V0, it will remain 25 milliampere. It's not going to decrease like this here. All right, so let's take this circuit here, RE here, and replace it by a current source. And let's see what happens. Here. Okay, so with the current source, with the current source, same thing. So we are again bothered about our negative here. With the current source here, Note that IE, this is my current source here, IE, is equal to V0 by RL. This is the current coming from here plus the current coming from here, which is IC. And as I said, IC, we can make it small. And so IE must be greater than or equal to V0 by RL. And so it tells us V0 is less than or equal to IE QRL. Okay. Or it says IE must be equal to V0 by R. So now note, go back to your previous problem. We required 2 milliampere here. V0 by RL was 2 milliampere. How much IE do I require? It says it should be greater than 2 milliampere. So maybe 2.5 is good enough for this circuit. In the previous circuit, we were requiring 25 milliampere for the circuit to work properly. Here. So by replacing the resistor by a current source, one drastically reduces the kind of uh, current that I need in order to drive my particular load here. Okay, so let's uh, maximum voltage swing. So now we, what we have is instead of the earlier, earlier we had this constraint was ICQ, RE, parallel RL. We don't have any RE now. So what we have is V0 is less than or equal to IEQ minus IEQ times RL here. So we have that constraint here. So the constraint on swing now is first, which was earlier, V0 must be less than VCC minus VB minus VE here. Uh, we also have VE minus V0 must be greater than or equal to zero. So that is there. And uh, do, we uh, do we realize where is this coming from? VE minus V0 must be greater than zero. Note that this is VE here. What is the minimum value? VE minus V0. Obviously, it cannot go below the below ground here. The ground is the ceiling, so we are saying V minus V0 must be greater than or equal to zero. So we've added that. And so we have this one we've already seen. V minus V0 must be greater than or equal to zero. So that tells us combining these two, that tells us the maximum swing that we can get is uh, VCC minus VB by two. And the other one is V0 must be less than or equal to I, IEQ, whatever is this bias current times RL or IEQ must be greater than or equal to V0 by R. 
So with the current source, these are the relevant equations here. These are, this is the same as before. Uh, the, uh, uh, we've just added that this is as, as, uh, uh, this one here and the other one instead of ICQ RC, RE parallel RL we have IEQ times RL here. so let's combine them together so it's the same thing here this was the first uh, schematic uh, with RE here uh, resistive biasing and this is a current source biasing and uh, compare the two circuits in terms of the requirements of current both of them can give you if uh, the same swing if you want uh, if you uh, so v0 if you choose re much smaller than rl it can give you v0 is vcc minus vb by 2 this will also give you vcc minus vb by 2 the difference is this will require a current which is vcc minus vb by 2 re much higher current while this one will require vcc minus vb by 2 rl note that rl versus re re we said is much smaller than rl so that's the advantage of common collector amplifier driven by a current here. And, and that is the reason why almost most of the places where uh, uh, current is a serious issue, where you're driving a uh, lot of current into a load, you don't bias it through a resistor. You bias it through a, a current source here. So uh, this is a comparison of the two that you can see here. Two circuits. Uh, both of them uh, biased at, uh, this is biased at 6.5 volt, gains are similar, uh, note both of them deliver 5.6 volt swing, this also delivers 5.6 volt swing, but note the difference here, 25 milliampers this circuit requires and 2.6 milliampers this circuit requires. So your current requirement becomes very, very small and because the current requirement, current is small, so these resistors can be high. These resistors that you see here can be high, 38K and 50K and all that here. So what you find is input resistance becomes better here. 19.7K here and input resistance is only 2K. Here. So that's the other benefit that you get. Here. And it's for that reason that although this is simple, easy to uh, design, easy to make, uh, simply use a resistor here and, uh, and you're fine. Uh, uh, as compared to a current source. Now I have to find a way of implementing a current source. It's very easy to put a symbol there and say 2.6 milliampers. But eventually I have to make this 2.6 milliampers current source using transistors, resistors and all that. Okay, so the circuit becomes a bit more complicated, but the price that you pay is worth it. 2.6 versus 25. And this is only for 2.2K. Okay, 2.2K. Now start imagining that I have a 100 ohm, 100 ohm load and the current that you require here and the current that you require here. So the currents really become very large, power dissipation becomes very large and so this is a very, very significant saving. A factor of 10 saving in ICQ, which means a factor of 10 saving in power dissipation, amount of power that you're taking from the load. So the, the, you know, you will not touch this particular circuit there this particular part here. This, this is how you would design the common collector amplifier. So one way in which you can make the uh, uh, current that you see here is uh, it becomes easier if instead of a single supply design, if I switch to a dual supply here, dual supply design here, VCC and VE here, then if you switch to this one, then a circuit like this, look, look at the current source, the way I implement a current source is here. Just keep this in, in mind here. This is the circuit. <laughs> Directly coupled input. A load is taken here, VCC here, and look at this particular part here. Now, this is the current source here. Q2. Now, if you, if you, if you look at this particular circuit, Q2, RE, R1, R2, this is a usual biasing circuit that you know. Except that most of the time you've seen this biasing circuit, R1, R2, and all that. We use the positive supply. Now here, we've used the negative supply, RE is there, R1, R2 is there, so it works in the same manner. Uh, VE here and ground here, so you'll, you'll have some voltage, net voltage at this particular point, voltage divider. And, and then minus 0.7, you'll have a voltage here. And this minus this divided by RE will give you the current. Now a transistor, why does this act as a current source? So when you look at Q2 from the collector side, what do you see? You see, the you note that, there's, an, there's a current that is flowing here, 
determined by re and this current uh, does not change much with the voltage at this particular point what do i mean by current source i mean by a current source is that the current which is flowing does not change with the voltage at this point and why does it not change with the voltage applied here well if you look into the collector what do you see you see r0 r0 of the transistor r0 is very high and therefore even if this particular voltage changes you know as as vs changes here note that this voltage will change but current in this particular branch will not change you know once the transistor is biased in forward active mode collector voltage is 2 volt or 3 volt or 4 volt or 5 volt doesn't matter the current does not change the current only changes a little bit by, by early voltage or r not which is very small so this is a nice uh, simple current source that you can implement so you have your normal q1 here and you drive it uh, drive your load and and vs here and vcc here and uh, uh, the only problem is at this particular point is that you have to use one particular capacitor here. all right so uh, one capacitor uh, is all that we require and uh, so this circuit should work uh, fine for us but even even this circuit if you go back and look at even this circuit what is the uh, power uh, note that this is 12 volt this is 12 volt and icq is 2.6 milliampere how much power am i taking from the supply 12 volt multiplied by 2.6 okay so which gives you what maybe 25 26 milliwatt how much power am i delivering to the load 12 into 2.6 is the power i'm taking from the supply power that i've delivered to the load maximum swing is 5.6 how much power are you delivering 5.6 you know power is v square by 2 rl so 5.6 square divided by 2 rl 2.2k so the power that you deliver to the load you'll find is very small you are still taking lot of power from the supply and the power that you are delivering to the load is very very small efficiency of this amplifier is maybe 10% 15% very poor if you are taking 100% power and you are only transferring 20% to the load where is the 80% going it's all dissipated here it's all wasted so even though we found that this circuit is much better than this in terms of efficiency is still very poor lot of power is being taken from here and not even one quarter of the power is being delivered to the load so when you are looking for a better output stage you have to design a new stage such that if it takes 100% power here at least 60 70% it should deliver to the load ideally of course it should deliver 100% but that's not possible but at least 60 70% it should deliver to the load and a smaller fraction it should dissipate uh, uh, you know within the amplifier itself so what we have to do is now look for a stage which is more efficient 